Welcome to episode five of the Gap Down Backer podcast. Uh, today, we, me and Coach Derry have a special guest with us, uh, Coach Nate Eimer from West Aurora High School. Uh, Coach Eimer um, had previously done a video for me on my YouTube channel about drills for the buck sweep, um, which should be out by the time this podcast release. Um, Coach, how you doing? Doing great tonight, guys. Thanks for having me. Uh, great night to talk some football. Good excuse to... Uh, not watch the Patriots and the Jets, so uh, um, thanks for doing that for yeah, me. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, would, I wouldn't watch that, Coach. That, that just sounds bad. That just sounds really bad. Coach Derry, how you doing? I'm great, man. How are you? I'm doing good. Um, so, yeah, like, I mean, the main reason we wanted to get you on, and, I, and me and Coach Derry have texted back and forth, um, is, is Buck Sweep. I mean, you did a video for me, like I said, on drills for it. Um, I'm not going to sit here and pretend I know what I'm talking about when I talk Buck Sweep. Um, I've run it one of... 10 years in coaching. Um, so like we haven't really, we haven't really installed it the past two years, you know, we're a wing T team just because I mean, we got, we have stud fullback. Um, mm -hmm. But like the one year I did ran it, we were running it pretty good. And then our, our best wing got his towards ACL and his MCL. And it kind of just, well, we're going to just run a lot of just sweep and yeah. belly and down now. Cause yeah. So, so kind of like why is buck sweep one of your big plays? Uh, what kind of um, drew you to it um, and switch into that uh, style of running attack? Yeah, um, you know, gosh, how the buck sweep be good for us? I mean, it, at West Aurora, we're at, I mean, we definitely have some kids that play the wing positions for us. Uh, we alternate our wings, like the right wing always stays on the right, and he becomes a halfback in the left wing. Um, we do some pretty cool stuff with that. Um, I like the angles for the blocking, you know, I think it helps out. We usually have some undersized linemen for the size of school we are and who we play. Um, and then it also allows you to play with guards that, you know, might be a little undersized, but are a little more athletic, you know, cause you're pulling them. Um, they're not base blocking a ton. Um, and then the other thing too, that I really like about it is, is it gives your running backs a clear path to go be athletic. Um, you know, like once you hit that seam, you go. You know, I mean, that's the challenge sometimes to me with like inside zone and some of these other schemes is not only do you have to have a kid, you know, who's very athletic, but you have to have a kid with great vision. And that's harder to find than you think. Um, so that's really the real reason we went to it. We thought that, you know, the angles, we thought it fit our personnel. And then to be honest with you, we just went to the wing T20 series, like, uh, gosh, what was that, like six years ago? And Buck Sweep just kind of became our thing, you know, <laughs> like you just look at the data and it's the best play we run. And so we just keep doing it and keep building on it. Now, can, can, I, I want to kind of continue with that. It, I mean, it is. It, I mean, you say it's your best play you run. Now, how, how much would you say that is because of the drills you've shown me? Um, how much is it because players that fit your personnel, or is it a combination of both? Um, is it just because how people line up against you? Like, why do you think it's so effective for you? I, I think it's all those things. I mean, one thing I will tell you from, from coaching, this will be my 10th year as a head coach and 15th overall that I've learned is like, you've got to have a base run football play. You know, you've got to have a base pass football play that when you go up, no matter what kind of front they give you, you can run it. And then, you know, like I kind of talked about my podcast or sorry, my YouTube, uh, the clinic, you know, you got to have drills then that fit that and you got to do those drills every single day. So that's one reason I think, I think early on it was the fact that it fit our personnel the best. Um, and then I think as we move later on in the years, it's because it's what we do. You know, I mean, every single day, uh, we do a set of individual drills that gear towards buck. We do, um, group drills that, that, uh, gear towards buck. And then we typically do an entire team segment, even when we're going against our defense or we say we're running buck, you know, we might do some RPO stuff behind it. We might check some things, but we're running buck for a whole 10 to 15 minute segment. Cause it's something that when it gets close and, you know, defenses are doing all these different fronts and DCs are ready, our kids know that they can run buck. Can I go on into buck? Like, I mean, what, I mean, what are your base rules? I mean, where, where do you, where, where do you, actually, let's just start base rules and I'll build off there. Cause it, I got yeah. 85 billion questions I could go with at once and I don't yeah. want to overwhelm you with and forget something. Yeah. So we went real simple. Um, just to kind of, you know, um, things that work for us. I mean, I know some people, you got your podcast, I uh, see the name gap down backer. A lot of people have called that before and our kids, we kind of struggle with that. Um, so I can't remember where I was at or where I saw it, but they just call it a fire block. And really a fire block is a fancy way to say down block. So 
if you start from the outside in, uh, if we ha we always have a play side wing, he's gonna fire block. So he's gonna he's gonna step down. Uh, I wish I could stand up and show you, uh, but he's gonna basically take three steps. And if he doesn't collision anybody, he's getting vertical. Like that's our fire block. So when I say fire, kids are taking three steps. If they don't collision something while taking those, they need to get vertical. Um, so play side wing is fire. Play side tight end. Uh, if we have him as a fire block, play side tackle is a fire block. Uh, your play side guard is pulling kick. Your center, this is the toughest block, but the most important block is reach to fire. Um, so the way we number our defensive alignment is like the inside of a guard is a one. Um, if the center has a one, like on the guard, like we want him to reach. And that's something we drill a lot because that's really when the play busts. Like when these DCs want to put a one tech over our guard and our center can reach him and we can pull our guard, man, that's good stuff, right? Because now your tackle's got a clear lane to go block the backer. Um, that's the big one, right? So centers reach to fire, backside guard um, is pull to the hole. Um, can't, you know, and the big thing with the guards that we kind of struggled with this past year is I don't overcoach this. Like my old line coach would probably tell you more, but the big thing I'm always telling him is you can't get caught up. Like when you're down blocking across the board, right? There's going to be penetration, right? There's got to be, I mean, good D linemen are going to come up the field and you can't have your guards running into that stuff. They got to get around it and get to where they're supposed to go. Um, so that's been a big emphasis. And if you watched our film, hopefully from whenever we get a play from last year to this year, we're hoping there's going to be a big change in that because that's something we've emphasized a lot. And then our backside tackle is touchdown alley, but he has to secure the B gap. So like if you get a three technique, like a guy on the outside of the guard, like you got to cut him and get him on the ground. Um, so that's our rules. So again, play side wing fire, play side tight end fire, play side tackle fire. Uh, front side guard pull and kick center reach the fire backside guard uh, is pull and lead and then our backside tackle is touchdown alley through the b gap can't yeah. just let a three tech chase your puller um yeah those are the base rules and then if we get this might be a different podcast but like if we so like i said the center is reach to fire if the center has a reach and a fire then we have to get out of the play we call something a little bit different if we have a fullback we would call that F buck. So our fullback would become our play side guard because then our play side guard would turn into the fire and the backside guard does the same thing. So it almost uh, becomes power at that point, pretty much. Pretty much, man. Yeah. yeah it's like, a, it's like, a, it's a less complicated power because we don't combo um, too much. We might do a little bit of that this year, but that was the other thing that, that we got into a little bit uh, early on. I just feel like our kids struggled with combo. And like, we had so many rules when I first took over the program of like, when does a guy come off? Like whose fault is it? You know? And I just got tired of that stuff. Right. Cause like, I just feel like offensively, if your kids know where they're going and they can play fast, you're going to find a way to hit some big plays, even when you're outmatched. You know what I mean? It's when you overcomplicate things, you know, and your kids don't know where they're going and they're missing blocks. And the next thing you know, it's a second and 13 that you really get your back up against the wall um, as an offensive coordinator, you know? Yeah, and I, so. I'm trying to add on to that. But, but I, you know, being a defensive coordinator, I, I know the wing team really well. And, and I've had a lot of success with uh, defending it. But mm -hmm. um, granted, because I coached in it and I know the ins and outs of it really well. And mm -hmm. uh, I remember last year we were playing Bellbrook and they run Buckswick really well. Mm -hmm. So for me, I always kind of what you explain by far the toughest one is when you get a one tech to the tight wing and a three to the backside. Mm -hmm. And at that point, Bilbrook had a weird adjustment. So they, uh, if I gave him a one to a two eye, they would block down on the guard and the tackle would pull. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the second I saw that and I told my guys, I said, let's find out if that's an adjustment. We start shooting the hell out of that B gap. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's so, like boom, boom, boom. So, but I think that right there, your adjustment is so much better. And to kind of build on the power too. I'm a big combo guy to power, mm -hmm. but the benefit of it, it looks like buck. So you don't change anything. But I think mm -hmm. the one thing that makes the wing tee difficult, especially when you have a defense that teaches linebackers like I do to scrape, is. You create a wall for them not to scrape. I don't tell them to shoot gap at blitzing through gaps. 
Mm-hmm. If they don't blitz, they know that they're just kind of flow. Uh, I like my guys flowing and tackling it for a three-yard gain. So you take the element of flow just by creating that wall. So mm-hmm. I, I really like that. And yeah, and you bring up a good point. I mean, and that that's part of our yeah, that's part of our philosophy too. I mean, you say like you know you hit us to a three-yard gain and you know you're winning and and you're right. But like the one thing with us, which is why we went to it, is you know, and this is where like you struggle right offensively is. You know, you always hear like when you have great athletes, put them in space, right? I mean, everybody says that, right? Put them in space, put them in space, put them in space, right? But the, again, history of our program, and we've gotten better. We just had a kid that uh, he's going to Dayton, and he was a big, he was a pretty big time quarterback for us. But for a while, like we always had kids that were kind of game managers, right? So we can't get in the spread and do that. So what I liked about this is the defense feels like they're winning when they get you at three, right? Well, I also know then one of these times we're going to break that tackle. You know what I mean? Like one of these times your kid's going to miss. And that's kind of our philosophy too. You know, like I always tell my kids and I learned this when I was in college, you get 3.4 yards three times in a row. That's a first down, you know? So, and that's also where we struggle coaches. Like our running backs want to bounce it, you know? And if you'll just make a wall, like you said, get behind your backside guard. I mean, most of the time you're going to get like two to four yards. You know, that's what I love about Buck too, because it is hard to shoot the gaps. And the other thing too, that's been big for us is and we've talked about as a staff is not necessarily a scheme thing, but like we can't cheat our tight end play, you know, like sometimes like we've tried to get away with tight ends that maybe weren't as physical up front and couldn't be blocked down. But I'll tell you what, man, those good DCs, they just beat your tight end up. You know what I'm saying? And then it's just no. Oh, I'm, yeah. a, I'm a I'm a three four fifty guy in wing T, but I, but I make sure I put an under front and yeah. then I put an emphasize. Usually, sometimes I put him in a six. That's the first thing I look for in a wing T. Let me see that tight end. Yeah. Oh, yeah. he's a soft. <laughs> You're gonna be a seven this week. Oh, this oh tight end play is so underrated in this offense. Like, and not even until we start running it. Like, that's part of the reason why you haven't been able to run jet sweep for two years. Like effectively, I, I mean that's not the only reason, but especially not this year, but the prior year was our tight end mm-hmm. play. Like, son, you gotta be able, to, you can't lose two, y- get driven back two yards on jet sweep. No. You're creating that he's already got a bubble. You can't have him bubble back into Wisconsin. Like, no. like no. it's so underrated. It's but speaking of, of key players, and I, I kind of want to hit on this because me when me and Derry did the be- the belly one, which um, we talked about how how important like how underrated and how important that backside tackle was for Belly in terms of cutting off and up to the second level. Like, what? Who do you think is like the underrated player on this? It, I mean, I know you mentioned your center and how important that block is, but who's kind of the underrated block at this point in in Buck Sweep? Man, the underrated block. I mean, we talked about the tight end. I mean, you, you're probably right with the backside tackle, you know, because I would also tell you. So again, you guys don't know the history of our program, but like we in 2016, I mean, we legitimately ran buck sweep like 70% of the time. Um, We barely threw the ball. We're an 8A school, right? But we shattered every offensive record our program's ever had. And we had some really talented running backs. But if you watch that film, our backside tackles sprung our touchdown block so many times. And it was like amazing because... We had this kid, you know, he's like 265, 70 pounds, and he would just hustle and hustle and hustle. And the next thing you know, our guy would cut it back, you know, on a big, long buck sweep, and he'd come across. So I would say that's probably one of the underrated blocks. But, I mean, you can't you, – the other part, though, is like you just – you can allow penetration, but your tight end – when you have a tight end in this that stonewalls and dominates a defensive end – I don't care what a DC draws up. This play is great. You know what I mean? Because you get that edge. You get two lead blockers out in front. You got a wall. I mean, it is it is good. Yeah. I want to do. And, and to the point, man, I've had you know, my first year going against them. I had to find our best D lineman and say, you got to go to the top. I'm not a flipper. Mm-hmm. Um, especially against win T team, because I know how much we shift and trade. Mm-hmm. And do all of that stuff. I said, but I mean, I, it was just to the point, man. Because he he essentially your end, and if he is, if he's getting mauled, I mean, you might as well just kiss it mm-hmm. goodbye. I always thought in Buck Sweep when we ran it, and I think the big issue we ran it when I came, we were a jet sweep team, and we ran jet sweep really well, but we were missing that C gap play. 
Mm-hmm. That C gap, okay. They're taking away trap and belly and power, and they're taking away jet. Mm-hmm. So we started running. And I think the two things, and I think this kind of went against our identity, and I think I already talked about this. Uh, our worst lineman was our center because we mm-hmm. ran jet. And if we ran like trap or belly, he just brought back and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And so the big issue we ran into is when we're teaching reach and we call it reach, I call it reach on backer. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. If they had a one neck, <laughs> one yard game every time. <laughs> there was some fatty that couldn't move, man. It's probably oh, yeah. like, oh, yeah. Oh, man, yeah. It's cool. so I always thought, but it's pretty incredible to hear how much you emphasize the center because I always said that's. Because that and uh, I'll tell you what, this Bell Book team I played did a really poor job. So uh, obviously you have, if it's reach on backer, you got like a trap fake and he's supposed to, this fullback's supposed to cut off the backside A. So mm-hmm. man, oh man, I had a heyday blitzing the backside A to them on Buck. Because yeah. it, it, I think I, I think the problem is with Buck, when you pull two guards, you leave two holes vacant. You do, and it's it, it, everything is in theory good, but if you don't run it well enough or emphasize it enough, they can't. It's got to be a series for you, in my opinion. Oh yeah, because like there, there's too many. You're pulling two guys, and there's too many holes to fill. And I think that I think the play side A and the back side A were always everyone overlooks. It. Everyone looks for the good down block, the center, and I mean the specifics that go into the guard. But I think the two A guys being so loose. Mm-hmm. And I knew that, and I was surprised to see how much a backside A gap blitz works so well. So, what would be some of your adjustments you would defend that? Well, the biggest thing is, is you talk about. It, I mean, your fullback's got to get involved, and I forgot to mention him in our rules. But I mean, we teach our fullback to go A to A, and he's kind of like yin and yang with the center, right? So, if the and this is something we do talk about when we, we so we do like a whole buck drill, and we when we do our buck drill. We basically, we have no quarterback, we have no receivers. We just have our line and our backs and our coaches. I really didn't develop this. Our coaches developed this. They just go through and they, they talk and then they go 50% and they go hundred percent with all the things you're talking about, coach. Like, you know, well, what do we do if we get this? Well, what do we do if we get that? What do they do if they do this? You know, so that way when we start going live, we go, you know what I mean? It's, it's tough to be, for me to be coaching and doing things and we're talking live, like that's what film's for. So anyways, my adjustment is really to make sure that my fullback and my, um, my center are working, you know, kind of as a tandem, right? So if the center is taking the backside one, well then fullback, you're going to take your path, man, but you got to get your, you got to get your tailor that front side a gap. So if the kid tries to come, just get a piece of them, you know? And again, one of the reasons we run buck sweep coach is the kids I'm playing at running back. I mean, they are, they're good athletes, you know, they're big time athletes that can really run. So all we need is just to get a piece of that guy. But when our play is really rocking and rolling, I mean, that's another thing, right, is that our center is able to reach that front side A, but if not, our fullback gets involved. And that's a lot of times when we struggle, right, when people are shooting is when our fullback just runs past people. Um, but that's, again, something we emphasize. We talk about it in our drills. Our position coaches talk about it. Um, try not to have, you know, we have adjustments, but the biggest thing is, like, you got to pl- follow your rules and you got to play fast. You know, and 3.4 yards is cool, man. That's a cool thing, right? <laughs> well, and, uh, I'll tell you what, man. Part of the reason why I'm so patient is because I, I grew up, I mean, I always thought I was going to be an offensive coordinator in the wind tee. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, my ambition is to be a head coach one day. I head coach yeah. called the offense. Yeah. And I could promote himself. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, well, I got to go to the defensive side. And yeah. part of it is I'm so patient on defense that a lot of DCs would get bothered at three, four yard gains. Uh-huh. Because cause that's just – then you just keep running it down the throat. For, you know, I'm usually really patient, and I, I think the same way as offense. So that benefits. The only other thing I wanted to ask regarding it, how, how big of a deal is it? Do you have any problem with the slant and zero tech? Oh, yeah. I mean, especially when okay. you're outmatched, yeah, right? So – up in an under front or I slant it to the under front? So I want to know how much you guys emphasize that aspect of it. And that's a whole other thing, right? We talk about in scouting reports is, right, like how much teams do that. Um, and then the other thing sometimes we'll do, and it's not great with the rules, but if we are facing a nose and we really feel like we're overmatched, we may just call F buck. You know what I mean? Like we may just call, uh, we would call it right 22 F buck. 
Um, we do a lot of things like that. One thing that's helped us with slant and angle, and I, I, this would actually be a good video for you too, coach. One thing that we do is we developed a system called buck check with me. So my favorite formation when I'm good up front is to get in double tight and line up double wing, right? And this is why I love it though, right? Is you say you're going to take and you're going to put your best D end, you know, where you think I'm running the ball. Well, I'm going to scout you and I'm going to run at your DN that isn't as good. So my kids are going to come up to the line. They're going to go, Larry, Larry, 928, 922, whatever it is, right? And then all my wing's going to do, he's just going to do a little subtle motion, right? And then we're going to go down, set, go, and we're going to go. And, and then I've always felt like when we're really good at that, we're rolling with that, that's tough on slanting and angling too, right? Because you could tell me, well, coach, my kids will see that and just call it. But this is the best quote I ever heard. I'm not calling plays against you. I'm calling plays against the 16 and 17 year old over there. You know what I mean? Like those are the kids that got to move fast. And then, you know, when we're really rolling, we go, you know, we'll, we'll call it like wiggle the left and then we'll run waggle. Right. So you see us wiggle our back all the time and then we're running buck. Well, now we're going to come back and run waggle or run weak side belly. Um, when we're rolling, we've had some good stuff. I mean, the hardest thing though, is like, you guys talk about tight ends. And I don't know if you guys struggle with this. We just struggle to find that kid. Cause we typically need that kid to play a lot of DN for us too. You know, and we're, we're an eight, a school. We don't have like a ton of kids, um, that go both ways and play against teams with a ton of kids that go both ways. So it's all good stuff, man. I love talking ball. This is, uh, <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, and this can maybe be something you guys look into my last year at tip, uh, we had, two phenomenal tight ends that were the same class. So um, at, at this point, we alternated every series. Ah. So, yeah. like, so they both were, both. Were, I mean, when I, my first year, my first uh, stop coaching, we were just a straight 50. So the two, they were, we called them DNs, but they were essentially outside linebackers. And, okay. Uh, and so one played outside linebacker. The other was probably one of the best inside linebackers I ever coached. Okay. But like we literally just only all we had to do was just rotate them every series on offense. Uh-huh. Um, but I, I think that that would be my recommendation is find those two DNs and it's the bigger the school, see if you got three and just rotate them. I mean, yeah. we, we got lucky and the year after we had someone that was ready to rock and roll at that position. But usually we've had a lot of success at a pretty average school just trying to find Huh. And then at that point, if we found two that were studs on defense, but the problem is, I mean, we, we try to do that at Fairborn. I think some of our kids weren't bought into the offense that we want to do. That, that's that's a huge element you got to, yeah. that we take for granted. I, I took for granted coming, but, you know, I think for a bigger school like you guys, maybe see if you can find two tight ends that if they play DN, just rotate, rotate them every series, right? And just yeah, say, no, you're right, yeah. That's a great idea, Coach. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that, I mean, that's that's where we kind of got – I mean, we finally found a tight end this year. And in week five, he blows out his leg mm. on a horrid injury. But, I mean, he finally – he's just figuring – he's starting to figure it out. Like, he mm-hmm. – I mean, I've never seen a tight end run the waggle drag route as well as he did either. Like, mm. I mean, he was mm. always open. Like, I mean, that's mm. – he just he, – he found it. He got in the hole, and he ran well. I mean, he ran – why pop really efficiently off jet? Like, I mm. mean, down block, like an SB, and he's soft. He's a six foot four, 180 pound sophomore. Like, Whew. so I mean, hope knock on wood, his his leg heals and he can play next year. I mean, it, it, it's going to take a lot of work, but if he can, I mean, he's going to be a stud as a junior. And yeah. it's kind of, but I can't kind of continue with Buck. Like, obviously, trap and wag are kind of like the two plays off of Buck. What other adjust? I mean, you mentioned double tights. What other adjustments do you make off of it to kind of give yourself an advantage? Um, you know, I mean, I'm trying to think of some more other adjustments. Um, you know, we run like a, a false pull reverse, so like we call it tug. So we'll just show Buck, and then we'll flip the ball to our uh, our wing back, and he'll take off and run the other way. We'll we'll lead our fullbacks. So like if we're in a right formation, like the one kind of drawn right behind you there, coach. Um, we'll just show 22 buck. We'll flip the ball to our wing back. We'll, uh, can't call it crack blocking anymore. We'll flat block with our split end and he'll pick off and make a wall. 
and then our fullback and our quarterback lead. Um, so that's a good one when people are flowing, especially with running backs. Um, we have at times comboed our tight end with our wing when we get that like nine tear technique. Um, we're going to do more of that this year. That's kind of something that we've, we've messed around with and done because the, the, we've struggled more with the nine tear technique than like a guy lining up in a seven or an eight and just beating up our tight end. Um, just because sometimes like with our wings and the angles, um, just hasn't worked out as well. And sometimes our wings just haven't been good enough to block those DNs. Um, and then, you know, spreading people out too. like, we're starting to get in, uh, there's a lot of slot wing T guys out there. I think if you talk to me in five years, like we're going to move more towards that just because, you know, I'm not like a huge RPO guy, but man, you stick one RPO on these people that want to fly downhill when they see your running backs. It is a game changer. You know what I'm saying though? Like it is. Especially it's, it's, but sweeping under center. I, I'm like, let's go. You might yeah. be keeping the gun. I, I'm freaking out the whole game. I, yeah. I want to put <laughs> yeah. back by back under any circumstance. Yeah. Well, well you're going to catch me to say the only one coverage the rest of the game to that man. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to yeah. do that either. So like. No. You know, no. You, you, I'm not a big fan. I've always been, you know, under center because I like the timing of everything. Mm -hmm. but like, I'm not an idiot too, man. You just being on the defensive side, you, you give me that look one time. Yeah. The RPO that backside backwards. The second I blitz and you hit a slant for 20 yards. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, oh, it'd yeah. be great because because he, he won't hear anything, and then you'll just hear, see him yelling and screaming. No, he ain't gonna hear what somebody's saying to him to try to fix it. Like, it's hilarious. It just as, as an offensive coach, just sitting down at the opposite end of the field, you're just like, hey, hey, hey. yeah. I mean, our last game, dude. Uh, it was like we played a team that liked to screen a lot. I said, all right, I'm just not gonna blitz. I'm a yeah. big dude. I don't need to blitz. Yeah. Mid second quarter, I blitzed for the first time all game. They made a damn screen. <laughs> at 30 yards. Hey, oh, and by the way, I don't, listen, dude. I don't think they'd run a screen up to that point I either. Any blitz I had on it, <laughs> so I wouldn't say. Oh, I was so mad. Yeah, that's good. That's like good stuff, man. The RPOs are fuck sweet. I, I've seen Ohio State under Tom Herman do it. Yeah. Uh, that was my first exposure to it. I, I got really bored of a quarantine. And I, I, I kind of watched uh, Ohio State's all-22 national title run. Okay. Uh, and against Bama, they always uh, they always RPO'd that middle overhand backer. Mm -hmm. And because they were – because how Nick Saban's philosophy is, they box out everyone outside and the run defenders are the run defenders inside. Mm -hmm. And they would run essentially buck sweep. Mm -hmm. And it was a little bit different blocking, but they always RPO'd that backside backer. They just kept hitting slants of bubbles. Mm -hmm. It really just kind of really conflicted that guy. And yeah. back to the point, that's kind of why Zeke's run hit for yeah. 85 yards later in the game because the it, linebackers were frozen. That's nasty. Yeah. And no matter how good the scheme is, you know, like you said, you're calling plays against 16, 17 years old. So, like, you hit it once or twice, the kids are not going to be reluctant to the scheme, but you're going to get them thinking, like, mm -hmm. oh, this is coming. Mm -hmm. And then now you can kind of get into your stuff again and – you run them. Mm -hmm. I think it's a really good change up and freeze. Yeah. So that, that would be some of the things we've done. The, the hard part about it with me, and this is what I've struggled with though, is, you know, we've also got to execute that well on the other side of the football. You know, that's a hard thing, you know, for a young kid um, to do. And sometimes like you go back and forth, like, is it just something you call? You know what I mean? Do you run it enough at practice to get good at it? Cause essentially, I mean, good RPO teams. I mean, it's like old school option, right? Like you either marry it or you don't. You know, like I was in a program one time and, you know, we would run some option, but then we try to do some other things and then we wouldn't have success with it. And it's like, well, that's why. Cause like, if you're an option team, you got to do it all the time, you know? And if you're an RPO team, you know, you got to do it all the time. And I think that's the thing, like, you know, we're kind of at those crossroads right now. Like, I think it's something we got to do all the time because it does give you an advantage. I mean, it's a, it's a way when you're equal or not as good up front to even up the game. You know what I mean? You slow teams down from coming at you. Um, and doing some things like that. Also, so we did it toward the end of it. We got in the gun. Um, we called it only alert RPO. So the quarterback never read during the play. Because I think that's a. I think the hard part about it is um, that we ran into when we first installed some of these RPOs was the quarterback's footwork got so bad. Hmm. You know, because like he was mm -hmm. riding it, 
and read it, and then like his stance would be open. He just throw it this way, mm-hmm. overthrow it, underthrow it. So we would just tag it a slant or a bubble. It, mm-hmm. it'd be double slant or bubble. Mm-hmm. And we told the quarterback just look at if there's green, throw it. If you can get mm-hmm. five yards throwing the ball, throw it. If not, hand the ball off. Mm-hmm. Kind of, but that that but that was because we didn't want to marry into it. We, that was just yep. what we are. Um, when we had a little bit of success doing that, but then you're relying on a 15, 16, 17 year old kid to say, "Oh, I think I see green out there." Yeah. <laughs> Outside of like the double A's, like what other, what other, how do other teams try to combat the buck sweep stuff you guys do? Yeah, um, you know, it, it's really the DN play, right? So like teams will take and they'll line up like a kid right inside our tight end, and they'll just ram him right into the tight end right with outside leverage because they know that we want to run that ball right up our tight end's tail you know um they'll take and put a kid head up with the tight end and they'll you know shoot hard or just try to stop our tight end from fire blocking and make it really hard on our wing um and then the nine tear technique right like they'll put him way outside the tight end and he'll just be coming downhill just trying to blow up the, the pulling guards um, so those are really the big three things. I mean, you know, you see like people try to shoot gaps and things like that. I've never felt like if we're doing our job with the center and the fullback for us, how much we drill it, that people shooting gaps has been a big problem for us. Um, cause we don't really, we don't combo much. So like everybody's down blocking. So our wall is pretty good. Um, Scraping linebackers, like getting in good fits, you know, right where you're trying to run the ball is also something people just, they scrape so hard over the top, which is that's when you got to use some like false poles. You know, you got to play some games with some, uh, we called something like a buck pass one time. It was basically our way of running like a naked uh, boot, you know, Um, we would just pull our guards and our kids would just tell them like, don't go down the field, but we'd run like a crosser and, you know, and then our our quarterback would just take off too. But those are the big things, you know, we're, we're trying to develop some things right now. Um, some people call it the down play, right? Like I'm sure you guys have heard of that. We've struggled with that. Yeah. Yeah. There it is. Yep. 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 Um, we've kind of struggled with that a little bit. So maybe I'll have to pick your brain about that. But uh, Kenny Simpson, I think I've told you about him. Yeah. I've learned a lot of his stuff. They got a real, they call it belly, but they do. It's more like a wham play to me where they just start uh, pulling the backside guard base block and wrapping the wing inside, you know, just something straight ahead downhill. Cause that's the other thing I think what makes it hard is when you can go downhill, you know, and block down and then you can trap and then you can block straight ahead and just hit something fast. Then I think you got something, yeah. you know? Um, so down, yeah, those are this. always been a, a scary play for me. I mean, I, okay. what, what would you, how do you go against spilling? How do you, how do you, how do you scheme against teams that do a really good job of just have the outside linebacker stick his nose in and make him, buck bounce yeah um you know man sometimes it's time to bounce right like we tell our kids that I mean sometimes you just gotta outrun them the other thing too we've always talked about again is like consistently making that kid do that right so like stick your foot in the ground and get vertical because there are times like you know you play against good football teams like they're gonna stuff your buck right but it's it's the fact that and you know this coaching defense against it it is hard to get that kid to do that for four quarters, right? Especially when you got kids running the ball behind them that can fly, right? Which is a lot of what we have. And it's one of the reasons we went to it is that a lot of the kids that we've coached through the years, when they stick their foot in the ground and they go, man, if you're not in great position, coach, we are gone. Right. And that's, that's another big reason we like buck. And it's funny because a lot of people, you know, typically want to run the wing T, you know, with, you know, the, the, the ground and pound guys, right? Like the four, the, the three yard guys, but we really love Buck because we just feel like, again, you really do have to fit well. And when you don't fit well, we're going to hit it. You know what I mean? We try not to overcomplicate it. Cause that's the other thing too. Like, and I've gotten into this with my coaches sometimes it's like, we just out scheme ourselves, right? Like let's just run our stuff, be good at it and take what we can get. And we try to give our kids a thousand rules and they usually end up messing it up, right? And then the defense usually doesn't do what you think they're going to do, you know? <laughs> I, I mean, the one thing, I, I'm a big spill and scrape guy. Yeah. But I, but I think, I mean, like you said, you know, what, what, you're making our kids read their keys and executing in that every single time. Mm-hmm. And at one point, man, it's not going to happen. And I might have mm-hmm. to the same gap. I think 
The, the other question, two things I was going to ask you. Um, I, I do a thing called an eat and a tech stuff, which is end after tackle. And and I, I cut, it's really, I, I end up calling it bat because I don't like calling those guys. And, but it, it's the, we uh, loop the tackle. I, I was, first, immediately, it kind of crossed the face. And he becomes the kick out guy and spill. And then we try to stump that uh, outside linebacker right in. And mm-hmm. kind of, I, I teach him read and just kind of go. Mm-hmm. Uh, you guys get a lot of that action. <sighs> You know, we don't, and I think some of it is because we check so much stuff, Coach. Like, when I'm running, I rarely line up. When I'm under center, we rarely line up in right or left off the bat and just run our plays. And and it's one thing that I think has helped us with some of that stuff. Like, we don't get a lot of, like, stunts and things like that. And then the other thing, too, is, I mean, we teach a lot of our kids and we're on fire. Like, listen, man, I don't care what is going on behind you. When you take those first three steps, I mean, you are a, you are a train on a, on a, I can't even think of the word right now. You're a train, you know, like you are going, I don't care what you see, you are lighting it up. So that's another big thing for us. Um, But no, I haven't seen a lot of like, uh, it's more just the really intense slanting and angling and people getting off the ball. But see, again, like, you know, we could sit here and we could talk about all these things, you know, and, and, and what's, you know, what you should do and what you could combat. But we also try to keep it simple. Like if we get off the ball and we play, like we know the play, right, coach? Like, so if we're getting off on the snap count and I'm contacting you before you're slanting and angling, well, then I'm, I got the head start, right? And that that's the other thing. Like we really, we try to not make our adjustments so complicated for our kids because again, this isn't college, right? Like, I don't know what your guys' background, like I played college football. I mean, Dude, I had all the time in the world to watch film and I was older and I concentrated. Like what I've learned with high school kids, like most of them is, I mean, this is a very, uh, you know, you got to keep it simple for them, right? Because they got a lot of things going on. You know, they're only at school for so long or they're only at practice for so long. So that's one big thing with us when we talk about all this stuff and all of our adjustments. Yeah. Uh, That's another thing. You know, and it's funny, I bring it up though. And like one big thing that I've learned you know, over the years is like, and this is kind of getting on a different topic, but it goes with like, what we do is like, you know, you want to keep it simple. You want to have a process on how you go through things because, you know, it's important to be a dad, you know, it's important to be home. It's important to be present, you know? So like a lot of things that I've learned over the years from being a head coach is like every system that I develop, like, I want to make sure that my, my, my coaches can go home and be home. You know what I mean? Like that stuff is really important to me because I want to do this till I'm, you know, retired. Right. And like, I I love coaching and I don't want to ever feel like I'm not doing a good job of that. You know what I mean? Because I'm making things too complicated. Right. Or, I'm, you know, over coaching this, or I'm making my coaches do stuff. So you're talking about, I mean, my defensive staff, you know, to me, if if I want, uh, if I'm being a head coach, I think the one, the quality I look for is, is how good of a dad are you? Yeah, all of you, right? I mean, I, I, I'm training my men, and even as a defensive coordinator, I'm training my men to be great state citizens and fathers, and just great human beings. And part of that is they need to have great human beings coaching them and mentoring them themselves. So, mm-hmm. and, and to the point being is, I can't keep great coaches if I make them do B- BS work all the mm-hmm. time. If BS, let, let's come up with a new technique for this week, and let's study the adjustments. I mean, because like said, I don't know how it is out there, but I can tell you in Ohio, we're not paid six figures to do what we do, right? I mean, mm-hmm. it's a lot different in college. Like you said, even as a player, but as a coach. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, Division One level, you're making handsome money. You, you, wow. you better come up with stuff, and you better study it, and they better have you guys ready. But mm-hmm. there's a balance, I think. And I, I, I love Huge. that because I think, you know, we we're talking about all these ways to defend Buck Sweet, but – at the end of the day, if you can't down block, ah, I mean, yeah. it, and it, it's, it's funny you bring that up. So like I, I did a, like a five part glazier presentation this year. Right. And, and I really dove into like all of our film of block over since we started this in 2014. Right. And when we were successful and when we weren't successful. Right. And we struggled this year offensively. We, we made the playoffs four years in a row. And then this past year, 
I was telling coach who we went two and seven, we lost three games by I think a combined of like 13 points. So we were right there. Right. But we lost some games and we didn't have as much success offensively. And <clears throat> we get done with the season and everybody's like, wow, what about this rule change? And what about that rule change? And are we doing this? Do we need this adjustment? And like, I watched all this film getting ready for this five part glacier clinic. And you're so right. Like, when were we good? Well, when our tight end down block, our guards got depth, our center could reach to fire and our fullback did his job. You know what I mean? It's not, it's not the scheme. It's how well do you coach the scheme? And like that, what you said right there is such a great point. Um, and it's something I really try to live by the older I get. Cause like, you know, and it's, you know, I have all this time in the fall. I've been watching all these, uh, college games you're like man these schemes look cool right <laughs> yeah but I'm like yeah I don't know if I have time for that you know what I mean like <laughs> but yeah anyways although I, I get you coach and like I mean that's yeah. I mean kind of go back to your point like I mean it's it's how well you can coach things like mm -hmm. it, it, I mean it goes back to that old now it, it does not know it does not matter how much you know if you can't relay it and teach it to your kids it, it really doesn't mm -hmm. like they have you have to be able to convey that to the kids. I, I do not care if you have the Alabama playbook memorized from front to cover and you can mm -hmm. recite it. it. Doesn't matter if you can't teach it. Like it's it's yep. in the end, our sport comes down to fundamentals, especially yep. when you're talking about like two fairly evenly matched teams. It's who's more disciplined mm -hmm. and who can do their fundamentals for yep. a longer period of no, time. Absolutely. So, um, Coach Jerry, do you got anything else before we go? No, man. Uh... Absolutely not. It was actually fun to meet you. Heard a lot of good things about you. I actually uh, uh, seen some of your Glazier videos in clinics. So oh. it's kind of pretty neat to be on the other side of this. So I'll probably honestly get a hold of you and just talk. Yeah. You no. Know, management and stuff like that. I'm pretty interested to hear some of that and some of your systems. So. Yeah. No, I mean, reach out. I mean, I'm a real humble guy. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm an alumni of West High. And here's what I'll tell you is we, I'm in year 10. And I have had four winning seasons and I've had five losing seasons, you know, like I'm a normal guy. Like I'm not sitting over here telling you that, you know, every year we're perfect. Right. And every year we do things right. Um, but I am, you know, we, we made the playoffs for the first time in over 20 some years. And that was really cool. And we've made the playoffs the most years in a row ever, but we got humbled last year, man. You know, we switched conferences and we didn't do things as well. And I love talking football. I mean, I'm, I'm here to learn and for me to be sitting here even with you guys wanting for you to talk to me about how we run buck sweep is really humbling. So I appreciate that guys. This has been a really great experience. Well, well coach, I'm, I'm glad I could get you on. I'm glad we were able to uh, communicate and reach out. And like I said, you, you've done, I mean, this second time I've had you on something and we'll probably, I'm probably going to get you on more. Um, Good. Like I said, I, as I've said before, and I, and I say this all the time when I talk to coaches uh, both on and off screen, I was like, my main thing is to have good people. Um, yeah. like I said, I, I mean, obviously yeah, I, I want to learn and I want to help spread knowledge and give people platforms. Those are kind of my main goals, but I don't want to have a holes on my stuff. I want, I want to mm -hmm. find good people, people who are very involved in their communities, very involved with their families. Like I said, you could, I mean, I have no problem pausing a podcast so you can say goodnight to your kid. <laughs> that, that, I mean, I have an 11 year old daughter. Like I know how that is. Like I understand that like family comes first again, that's how it should be. Um, Especially that age that you have, I mean, your little girls are like that. that those okay. are memories you will cherish forever. It is that yep. age group. So, um, yep. but yeah, it's, coach. Just, it's important for me. I mean, just being on my staff, you know, I want, I want guys that, you know, I, I'm glad I have two coaches that say, Hey, I got to leave practice early. My kids got a soccer game. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. You go. Like I, yeah. I can figure that out. You know, I'm, I'm young, single, you know, yeah. I'm not ready for that commitment yet, but I want to be one day. You know what I mean? And being yeah. around guys that yeah. hear enough out of that is enough to where I want to be around. So we're yeah. not surprised you're single, Derry. Look at your hairline. Hey, let on, me so. know when you if you guys have any spring games. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I will. Uh, uh, I mean, boy, if it's spring break, I I'll come out and watch again. Have, have, have you have you paid attention to their state at all, Derry? Their governor doesn't let them do anything. You think they don't have fans? <sighs> Like, come on now. Like, they're, yeah. I mean, they're got, yeah. Yeah, we're not going to get, we'll get into a political rants and I'm not going to get in that yeah, on this podcast. This podcast, talk about how badass Bucks Bleep is. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. <laughs> it should make football happen right away. Yeah, it should, man. No, I think, I mean, I got, I think we'll play this spring. I mean, I think that's the trend. So, yeah, I mean, 
Love to have you come out. We'll be one of, uh, I don't even know who, I think California. I think they're more winter though, right? Yeah, California think, starts yeah, here in yeah. mid-December. Maryland starting really soon. North okay. Carolina, I want to say, is January. Don't quote okay. me on that one. Those are the ones, yeah. I, and then I know you guys are in the spring. Like Those yeah. those are the main ones I know off the top of my head still got to play. I think there's a couple more in the Northeast that are kind of weird schedules as well. Yeah. Um, but nobody's playing January football in the Northeast because, well, there's no, man, cold I mean, snow. We're supposed to be out there February 15th. I mean, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> yeah. oh, it'll be cold, but I'll tell you what, man. I, here's one thing I will tell you that's taught me is if I get to go out there and coach, I, I will never take that for granted again. <laughs> you know, I mean, all jokes aside, like, I have missed it. I have missed seeing the kids. I have missed going out there at 7 o'clock and, you know, being let out by the band. I mean, I have missed all that stuff. and. And uh, I, tell kids, I can't I, wait I, to get it back, you know? Yeah, I coach in a hazmat suit. Yeah. <laughs> if I could be coaching football, man. I would too, brother. Yeah, so hopefully, man, hopefully. But, uh, yeah, good stuff, guys. Well, all right, that will that will wrap up Episode 5 of the Gap Down Backer Podcast. Um, yeah, episode 6, uh, we will probably do Belly Sweep. Uh, episode 7 will be a combination of Belly Follow and um, – Oh, crap. Belly keep. Um, in, in part because follows a very simple play. Um, and we've already talked. Well, by, at that point, we'll talk belly about three times in a row. So, um, Coach, thanks again. Coach Jerry, I'll see you tomorrow at work. Um, and everybody, please enjoy.